puck is given an initial speed of 4.6 meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice is 0.05, how far does the puck slide before coming to rest? Solve the problem using conservation of energy. So we have a puck sliding along here. There's our puck and it's going this direction. And they say that initial speed is 4.6 meters per second. And they don't tell us the mass and they say that the coefficient of kinetic friction, so mu sub k, is equal to 0 0.05. All right, so that's pretty much everything they give us. So first off, let's go ahead and draw our forces on here. So we know that there's a normal force going up. There's, of course, mg going straight down. And they tell us that we have friction force, friction, and it is going backwards opposite the direction of motion. So they want to know how far does the, sl the, the puck slide before coming to rest, and they want us to use conservation of energy. So uh, let's write our conservation of energy equation, and I'm going to write all of it, and then we'll just go through and cancel everything out. So we have kinetic energy, one-half mv initial squared, plus mg delta y, plus spring constant, or a spring for potential energy, one-half k delta x initial squared, plus any work due to friction equals one-half mv final squared plus mg delta y final. Oops, I forgot initial over here. Okay, so we have spring one-half k, um, ooh, that was bad delta, delta x final squared, and let's see, that should be everything. All right, so now let's go through and cancel out what we don't have. So we do have an initial velocity, so that's good. Mg delta y, well, it's staying on the same plane. It's not going up or down in the y direction. So delta y is zero, and that whole term goes away. We don't have any springs, so that's gone. We do have work due to friction, so that's good, and we'll stay in the equation as well. They want to know how far does the puck slide before coming to rest. So our final velocity then is zero, and that whole term then turns to zero. Again, we don't have any sort of delta y change here. And then we also don't have any springs, obviously, so that's also zero. All right, so let's rewrite what we're given then, or what that leaves us with. So we have 1 half mv initial squared plus work due to friction equals nothing. So that's all equal to zero. All right, so now let's move friction over. So we have 1 half mv initial squared equals work due to friction. So what we're saying is the kinetic energy that we start with it has to be equal to our work due to friction because the work is the only thing stopping it. So now let's talk about the work due to friction for just a second. Since this is work here, let's write the work equation up here at the top. So work is always equal to a, f a force times a direction times the cosine of the angle with respect to the direction. So now let's plug that into our equation down at the bottom. I'm going to come over here. So we have 1 half mv initial squared equals f d cosine of the angle. Now what is the force? Well the force is friction up here. And friction, remember, I'm going to come back up here below work. Friction is always equal to mu sub k, it's kinetic friction in this case, times the normal force. So now this is why we summed the forces at the beginning. If we look at this, you may be already be able to tell if we sum the forces in the y direction real quick. We have n 
minus mg, and it's not accelerating in the y direction, so ma is equal to zero. So n equals mg. So now we solved for what n is, and we can plug it in up here. So this might seem like a whole lot just for one problem, but really we're just kind of putting all the puzzle pieces together. We just figured out, hey, this over here, 1 half mv squared, this equals work, and that's all that we have. And then we broke up work equation, and then we solved for what force is. So when we, going back to what friction force, we have friction force, oh, sorry, friction force is equal to mu sub k times n, and we just solved for n like we are talking about, so that's mu sub k times mg. So this is our friction force right here. So now we can plug that into the equa equation as well. So we have 1 half mv initial squared equals the force, which we just said was mu sub k mg times the distance, which is what we're solving for, times the cosine of the angle with respect to the direction. So let's look at the picture real fast and figure out what that angle is going to be. We know the direction is headed this way, and the force vector is in the exact opposite direction. So the angle that we're talking about is 180 degrees. So we have cosine of 180 cosine of 180. Okay, great. So now this is the final equation that we're going to do, and so let's go ahead and isolate what we're looking for, which is the distance of how far the puck goes before it stops. So if we divide this whole side of the equation, um, actually first, let's go ahead and look at this. Each term has a mass, and the mass isn't changing, so we can go ahead and simplify out a mass from both sides. So now we can divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of kinetic friction times g times the cosine of 180. And so cosine cancels, g cancels, and mu sub k cancels. So we have mu sub k times g times the cosine of 180. So that leaves us coming down here, down here, 1 half m v initial squared divided by mu sub k g cosine of 180 equals the distance. And if you're really good with trig and you want to simplify this even further, you could say, hey, well, I know cosine of 180 is negative 1. So we could say we have 1 half mv initial squared divided by a negative mu sub k g. So now let's plug this in, all the numbers, I mean. So we have 1 half of the mass. Oh, wait. Whoops. Sorry, what am I doing? We said we canceled out the mass. That's gone. Okay, so 1 half the V initial, which we said was 4.6, yeah. Okay, so 1 half, 4.6 meters per second squared, divided by a negative mu sub k, which we said was 0 0.05 times 9.8. And when we do all that, that gives us a negative 21.59 meters. And so in this case, since we got a negative value out of this, it's because the delta x that we're talking about of the final minus the initial is technically a, a negative, but all you have to do for mastering physics is just put in the positive value of it. Just think of it as the magnitude. So we have a positive 21.59 meters or 22 meters.